the number one thing that everyone is going to be focused on is China. Look for Trump to kind of reiterate some of the messaging he's used in the last week or so, talking about how we've made great progress, but he's still not going to give in with any, to anything less than a comprehensive deal. Um, I think one of the things that maybe is a little underappreciated is the risk of those auto tariffs you mentioned. This is something that I think investors have kind of put on the back burner as we focused on China. But as you mentioned, the report's due on February 17th. So I would be looking for Trump to really focus on reiterating his threats to impose auto tariffs as a way to get, bring the EU to the negotiating table. What the U.S. really wants from China is very simple. They want IP protection, right? If you're a big technology company, you're either banned from doing business in China or you probably don't want to go to do business in China because your stuff, simply put, might get stolen. At one point, Microsoft said that something like 92% of Windows installations a number of yeah. years ago were fraudulent. They were simply pirated. Is there it's, any sign, Clayton, that China will make a hard concession on intellectual property theft? Well, that's the thing. Uh, it's, you know, the difference between a hard concession and an agreement in principle, I think, is all up to the person who's receiving the, receiving the concession. It's all about what the U.S. views it as. And I would also say that it goes a little bit beyond IP protections. I think you're also looking for the U.S. to focus hard on additional market access, especially for U.S. financial services firms. Uh, we're also going to focus on f pushing the Chinese to revamp their policy of forced tech transfer when they partner with U.S. firms. Um, all of these things are, are really on the table and are going to require a lot of work. Uh, one interesting thing, and this goes to your point about a hard concession, Robert Lighthizer seems to be in the seat of driving a much harder bargain, especially on enforcement, than a lot of other people in the administration. A lot of people seem to be pushing to get a win, to get some deal by March 1st to sort of prove that the White House is able to deliver on its promises. I think that Lighthizer is the one guy who's going to be sitting there saying, look, let's hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure that this deal actually does something good for us. Do you think any investors or many investors, I mean, every time we talk about trade, the market kinds of get a little bit giddy. Do you think that the market as a group is wildly underestimating how far apart the sides may be? Um, I don't know that I would say wildly underestimating. I think that they are still underestimating. You know, a lot of the people that I've spoken to in the last several weeks kind of had this vision that going into those uh, meetings between Liu He and David uh, or Robert Lighthizer on January 30th and 31st, that that was going to be the, the great resolution. And I think that was unrealistic, but it reflects kind of the way that Wall Street views this. It's a really binary thing for them. Either you're going to fix the problem or you're not. I think that they have not a huge amount of patience and maybe even less understanding of how nuanced and how stretched out these things might become. Any surprises? You, you, it's hard, I know it's hard to expect a surprise. <laughs> it's like jumbo shrimp. It's an oxymoron. <laughs> you get my point. Is there something yes. that could come out of left field tonight from a business or investment perspective? I think that there certainly is. Uh, I would say that, you know, this is not directly related to trade, but certainly, uh, you know, an emergency declaration about funding for a border wall would catch a lot of people maybe a little bit by surprise and I think would change the way that investors look at sort of the general political risk. Wouldn't that just um, blow up the entire State of the Union then, Clayton? I mean, it would just, I everything would. else he Absolutely. says will be forgotten. Absolutely. And I think that no one is, no one is coming into today saying that that's likely to happen. I think people are looking at that as, maybe an outside chance. Um, obviously, Mitch McConnell and Senate Republicans really don't like the idea of the president doing that. It puts them in a very tough position with a potential vote through the Congressional Review Act. Uh, it puts everyone in kind of a tough spot, except maybe for the White House. Yeah. Um, but certainly that would blow everything up and take certainly Wall Street by surprise.